Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. What's well, Halloween month here at um my room? And so I'm doing some extra research on my videos for this month. So I'm watching this video I found, well, actually I found it last week in my Psycho video. I found an interview with Martin Scorsese. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I, he tends to come up quite a bit. And that's because not only is he a really good filmmaker, he also does a lot with film appreciation and preservation. So I usually find him a pretty good source to use. And so here he is back in 1982 on The David Letterman Show. And the subject actually has turned to horror films. So let's take a listen. Horror films can be the most fascinating. Mm -hmm. I just love them very much. Um, s somebody once uh, wrote, I think it was a British uh, critic, they said if you don't really understand or appreciate the, 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 the horror film, the horror genre, uh, you really have no understanding or love of film itself. Mm -hmm. and of course, that's a very inside thing in the sense of it, 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 what's, what's so important about really loving film itself. It really doesn't matter. You, know, you can live without film. But the idea is that in a sense, a horror film shouldn't be uh, um, dispensed with as, as junk or trash. Yeah. That's one of, the, uh, one of the, the things I'm talking about, archiving, the idea of collecting articles and building a library on all this stuff. Give us, in your estimation, the best horror film, because you're right, uh, most of them are lumped into the area of B or C films. What would be a really good horror film? Oh, there are, uh, that's, that's a hard one. Uh, because horror films naturally, uh, uh, for example, there are supernatural films about the supernatural ghost stories. One film called The Uninvited, with Ray Milland and Gail Russell, mm -hmm. uh, directed by Lewis Allen. Uh, Stella by Starlight is the theme song. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. And it's a beautiful film. And still very chilling, mm -hmm. very strange. Well, isn't that interesting? Especially considering I had already picked out this week's film, and it also happens to be Lewis Allen's The Uninvited. So let's get into it. The Uninvited begins on the cliffs of Cornwall. The waves crash against the cliffs as siblings Pamela and Rick climb up. They follow their dog into a huge abandoned house. They have a look around and decide it would be a nice place to live, so they actually decide to move there on a whim. They meet the owner, Commander Beach, and make an offer. Rick lowballs the value and is caught off guard when the captain accepts the offer without hesitation. He says he just needs money for his granddaughter Stella's college fund, but that ghost they hear crying in the night seems to suggest another reason. Are you trying to tell us the house is haunted? As Rick becomes more acquainted with Stella, he learns that this was her mother's house. And though she died when Stella was only three, Stella feels oddly drawn to the house. And what of that mysterious room that was always kept locked? Or that other ghost that tries to possess Stella? Well, you'll just have to watch it and find out. This is one of the earliest examples of a film that actually takes ghosts seriously. Usually it was done either for comic relief such as Hold That Ghost with Abbott and Costello or it was shown to be a hoax at the end in a kind of Scooby-Doo-esque reveal. But The Uninvited plays it straight and in doing so one of the strangest most enjoyable classic horror films is made. Based on the novel by Dorothy McCradle, The Uninvited is a very atmospheric film that owes much of its success to director Lewis Allen and to cinematographer Charles Lang Jr. The script calls for many tonal shifts throughout the film. There will be many scenes where something scary will happen and they will be undercut with a joke. And also there will be scenes where it doesn't feel like a horror film at all. But then there will be some small detail that will be kind of off and feel really unsettling. For example, the dog doesn't want to go up the stairs, or you'll see flowers wilting, interesting stuff like that. And despite this being Lewis Allen's first film, he actually handles all these things quite well. Now since this is a ghost story, there are ghosts that appear in the film. Now initially, Lewis Allen did not want any ghosts to actually be physically shown in the film, but the studio Paramount overruled him and they actually put a ghost in, and it's a pretty cool effect. One of the essays that came with this release of The Uninvited actually mentions that this ghost is a bit similar to one of the ghosts at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I hadn't noticed that before, but it actually does seem pretty similar. 
There's nothing confirming that Spielberg actually referenced The Uninvited with Raiders, but I think it could be possible. He definitely likes a lot of older films. So that's an interesting tidbit there. But Lewis Allen really does a good job with this film. I don't think anyone nowadays is really going to be scared by The Uninvited, but it does have some imagery that is still kind of startling even almost 80 years after it was released. And this leads me into the cinematography. Now you may recall Charles Lang Jr. was the cinematographer on the film one Eye Jacks, a Marlon Brando movie that I actually covered a few weeks ago. And here I think he does some of his best work. The Uninvited features some great gothic imagery. It's dramatic, has tons of shadows, and really set the standard for every haunted house picture that followed it. The soundtrack to the film is also quite memorable. Victor Young's haunting score fits the visuals very well and really adds to the atmosphere they create. However, what many may not know is that the popular jazz standard Stella by Starlight actually came from this movie too. Initially written as a song that Rick improvises on the piano for Stella, Stella by Starlight became an immediate hit. Lyrics were added to it later, and it has since been covered by everyone from Frank Sinatra to Miles Davis. And now it's time for the actors. Ray Milan really does a great job and becomes kind of the standout role in The Uninvited. He ends up bringing most of the humor to the film, as he tries to explain away all the paranormal events, as well as trying to show a lot of confidence even when it's clear that he's just as scared as everyone else. Oh, disturbances wouldn't disturb me, not for a single second. Oh! Oh, it's Bobby. Yeah, of course it's Bobby. Now don't go getting imaginative. And an interesting fact, Ray Milland actually won the Best Actor Oscar the very next year for Billy Wilder's The Lost Weekend, a film that was also produced by Charles Brackett. And Ruth Hussey is also good in this film. She does a good job as Rick's sister Pamela, and she ends up being kind of the counterpoint to Rick's scientific point of view. And they have a really good dynamic as they try and figure out what's actually going on in the house. And the author Cornelia Otis Skinner also appears in this film. And she gives a very unnerving performance as Miss Holloway. She always reminds me of Mrs. Danvers from Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca. And she's always talking about Mary Meredith with that giant portrait of her behind them. And Alan Napier is also really good in this film. Fans of the 1960s Batman show with Adam West will likely recognize him as Alfred, but he's really good as the Doctor in this film. And another notable role in this film is Gail Russell, who plays Stella. Now, this film is credited as introducing Gail Russell, and she'd been in a few other films before this, but this was really her first big role. And that same year, she actually played Cornelia Oda Skinner in another film, which also happened to be directed by Lewis Allen. She's apparently signed by Paramount just out of high school based pretty much entirely on her looks, and so she was always very self-conscious about her acting skills. And this led to her being very nervous on sets, and she ended up developing a pretty heavy drinking problem. And sadly, she died when she was 36. She's not very well known nowadays, and to be honest, I haven't really seen her in a lot of films. One I have seen her in, though, is called Moonrise, and this is really interesting. I definitely recommend checking it out. But other than this, I think The Uninvited is really your most famous role. Well, that's The Uninvited for you. Now, if you want to watch this, your options are actually kind of limited this time. Physically is pretty much the way you're going to have to go for it. Now, luckily, this version is very good. It's a 2K restoration from the Criterion Collection, and also happens to be one of the cheaper releases from them. So now for the comment question. And I'm wondering, what's your favorite Haunted House film? I know a lot of times when we hear Haunted House, we think of some of the classics like The Haunting or The House on Haunted Hill, but there are a lot of newer Haunted House films that are really good too. So really just pick one or two of your favorites and start discussing them in the comments below. But besides that, hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you like to see more. I'm putting out new videos like this every single week, so be sure to tune in next time to see what I'll be talking about then. Other than that, keep watching movies and I'll see you next week.